I've got one that can see. Logic before authority. Hi guys, this is Daniel Alexander Cannon here on Logic Before Authority. Hope y'all guys are doing well. We are going to take a look and uh, move forward taking a look at uh, the the last video. And where I, well, this video, the one we're looking at actually. Learn what angels, angels look like and see and see the spark of life. Now, I know quite a few of you have seen this, but now that I've got this where I can actually see what I'm actually talking about better, you've seen the other video, you know what I'm talking about. I think it'll be a better review this time. So we're not going to waste any time. We're going to go ahead and get right on into it. <coughs> and we're going to take a look at uh, some different scenes and talk about them a little bit. Because I really want everyone that has the ability to can see this, see it. And I'm asking also that y'all guys share these videos, okay? Y'all guys are the, if anyone outside of this circle sees these, the only way that's going to happen is if y'all guys do it. Because YouTube has me uh, in a box, okay? You might say in a corner. And I can only only have so much reach. And I'm, on, I'm never going to get any more unless you, yeah, you, the one listening to my voice right now, do it. All right, let's go. I'm gonna turn down some of this volume here. Okay, obviously, this is uh, was the Super Bowl, and when uh, the Super Bowl happened, of course, I did a video about it, and I knew they were up to something in the skies. They were everything they were doing. Every commercial was about had to do with the skies and uh, being that the airplanes were going to be flying over I was suspicious we all were looking at what the information they put out they and the reason why it was all coded perfectly is because they code everything they do perfectly meaning the gematria and stuff like that if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, I'll have to explain it in depth one day Okay, again, I'm sure because there's probably at least a few new people here. So, um, what we're looking at here is imagery, symbolism. Okay, so what is the symbolism? Well, we see a bunch of lights in the sky, which of course are the fans holding some lights that they gave out to them. And of course, lights in the background in general and fireworks. And then we see Rihanna up on this raised platform which is in the same it's a 16 by 9 basically ratio the platform that she's on which is the same platform as um, your screen that you're looking at most likely okay and uh, there's a reason for that because it's a window you see she's literally standing on a window okay and when you see it from below, you see that it's purple. The glass has purple light or haze to it or whatever. And again, purple is royal purple. The reason why it's called royal purple is because it is the color of deity. Okay. So she's standing on a window, window, a gateway, a path across the veil. Now, it, it's not an actual path across the veil but it is symbolism for it okay this is why I wanted to come back and explain better because I, I'm not as distracted as I was the other day so she's standing on a window she's in a completely red outfit with a the ugliest dress I've ever seen in my life but I suspect it's the dress obviously it's red for you know what and everybody else was dressed in stark white right She's like, uh, it's kind of like she's the, the red dragon or the, a, a deity. And that's what she's symbolizing is actually Isis is who she's symbolizing a uh, ancient Egyptian deity that was said to, uh, said to exist, said to live. <coughs> and we'll see some more imagery of that here as we go along. So, so you got her raised on a window, on a gateway into the heavens 
and you got all the stars and the fire shooting off from the fireworks and all this stuff. And what's she singing? She's saying, shine light like shine bright like a diamond, like a diamond in the sky, right? They're talking about the angels is what they're talking about. She's singing about that. And she's she's also um she's I can't think of the word I'm looking for, so I'll just say it in a different way, but they're showing you symbolism of something that's coming. She's giving you a glimpse into their plans, meaning that they've got a big show that they want to put on in the heavens, and they want us to uh, be kind of expecting it because of all the things they're doing right now to tell us to look up, like the balloons and the UFOs and claiming they're shooting them down and <coughs> all this kind of stuff, right? So... um yeah, they're pl they're planning an event that's going to happen in the heavens, and if you're not aware of that, this is coming, and it's going to be orchestrated and fake. It's going to look real though. They're not going to bring any anything worldwide like this using the technology that they've been building up for this for a long time. They're not going to go easy. It's going to be shocking. You remember that the Bible said that uh, the People will have heart attacks, basically, because of what's coming upon the earth. Well, this is going to be part of that. The other thing is, is that we are now already seeing the things that are crossing the veil. People are having supernatural experiences all around the world on a regular basis now. And I know some of you hearing my words right now know that I'm telling the truth because it's happening to you. Because I know too, because it's happening to me. Supernatural things. <clears throat> and seeing supernatural things and hearing supernatural things. And, you know, I could get into it, but like, I just watched a video of uh, off of Mr. MMB 333's channel and he his whole video was about these lights in the sky, right? These diamonds in the sky, you know, the angels. And he shows all these videos and almost every one of them, I'm 99% sure were our deities. You can call them angels. If you don't like that word, I'm okay. I'm, I've got to label it something. And the closest I can label it to are angels. Now, not everything that lights up and is in the sky is an angel, and all angels aren't necessarily good. And the Bible specifically says we should not worship these things. Okay, so if you see one at some point, don't worship it. Um, it's There's nothing wrong with, uh, you might just say, admiring or looking at, but don't worship it and don't try to do something crazy like touch it because this has to do with the ark this has to do with the spark the ark of the covenant the spark <coughs> the the just all the times that the bible is referencing the ark it's talking about the spark it's talking about the power of god the power of light and um like in the tales of the Ark of the Covenant, when people would get too close to it or touch it by accident, it would shock them and kill them. It says it right in the Bible. So, yeah, don't ever try to touch an angel. All right, let's keep going here. <clears throat> There's your symbolism. And here comes more symbolism. Yep. That's the, of course, the triangle hand sign. It's based, they use it for many things. One is a sign of power, various things, but uh, your, your small, lower level Freemasons will use it um, when they, um, when they're like doing a video, you'll see them putting their hands in these positions. And it's not by mistake. They'll do it repeatedly maybe not in the same minute, but they do it repeatedly, letting you know one thing they're saying on their video to people who are watching, like the upper level Freemasons, they're saying, I'm in compliance. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. This is okay. I've checked everything out. This is, I'm in line with what I'm saying or doing, right? 
And that's what the low-level guys know, that they're saying that I'm in compliance by doing this hand sign. They normally do it in down in front of them when they're talking, moving their hands, and they'll do it. Or either they'll do it like Trump does it when he's sitting down. Just, just Google, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Trump sitting down. And you'll see him doing this. I know most of you know this. Uh, Angela Merkel, which is the granddaughter of uh, Adolf Hitler. Didn't know that? Look into it a little bit. Look at the pictures. Look at her face. Look at Hitler. Okay. Anyways, uh, yeah. So let's get on. Let's keep on getting on. Some of this I'm going to just kind of uh, just jump on through a little bit. It was just putting together the story kind of of the video. Obviously, this guy's talking about the rapture. I'll let some of it play just in case somebody hasn't watched the other video, but I'm not going to play all everything. Week. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Thompson, what if your wife finds out? Where did my Christian limo driver go? Mr. Thompson, what's happening? It's the rapture, Shauna, the belong. We must suffer through the apocalypse. I'm fast forwarding a little bit. I was wrong. What if the rep? You see, this is what they want, is they want people to lose hope in what they believed in, lose all hope in what they believe in because they want to give them a new God, a new religion, a new one world religion. That's what they want to give them, but they've you've got to take it away before you can get people to accept something else, okay? And you have to take it away by breaking their belief, okay? A fake rapture, would that do it? Uh, it could for a lot of people. It wouldn't do it for me. It probably wouldn't do it for maybe you, but a lot of people. And that's why I'm saying we need to share these videos, okay? I know you would think if someone's going to wake up, they'd wake up or woken up by now. But it's a process of waking up. You, you don't just go from one day thinking one way and the next day you find out the truth so you think completely different it's a process and you know we kind of have to hang in there and try to help people right and that's what i'm doing anyways to god i was wrong what if the rapture is coming and i haven't led a good enough life god wouldn't spring the rapture on us unannounced he'd send a sign marge is right the rapture isn't coming from the sky Hang on there. And of course, they've got to throw in there and let you see that the things that are coming from the heavens are fake. See? Blood coming from the sky. Oh, it's, it's a helicopter with, and them dropping blood, right? Because the whale has a, a spear in it, right? They're just giving you a hint. If you're awake, you pick up on the hint that, that they're just showing that it's fake. It's not blood from the sky. It is blood from the sky, but it's a setup. It's they're controlling it. You get it? It's raining from the sky. Ten. Do you have any books on the rapture? Yes, this one is fifteen percent off. And of course, make fun of you if you believe in a god, and especially if you believe in our Father in heaven choosing to send His own Son, His own image. To the earth you know he created us he put us here and yet we can't believe that it's possible that they that this god that created everything would send his own son down to be part and to help the humans that he made his own children that he made because they were in trouble and they needed direction i think a god that that created everything and loves what he created would do that. And, you know, people say, how can you believe in it? You weren't there. I believe there's air in the air and I can't see it either. I can breathe it. <sighs> hey, what do you know? There's air there, but I can't see it. So how is it real? 
It's because it's on the other side of the veil. And so is God. That's why you can't see him. He's on the other side of the veil. And that's what this video is going to, it's teaching you or going to teach you is that there is a veil and how you can see it and what to do when you do see these things. So let's keep going, right? I'll take everything you got. And would you like to take advantage? Man, and you're reading books. Books will help me Fast figure forward. out how nigh. This whole deal is scientifically proven. Ten. May 18th? That's one week from today. And they, of course, they know the people that are awake like to figure the numbers and try to figure out what they're thinking. But, you know, to try to guess the rapture date, um, you know, I've got some ideas as to what a rapture date would might be, right? You know, uh, the Bible says that the, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Well, that narrows it down pretty good. You know, we've seen one of those, or at least most of us have. Right, I was standing on the 33rd parallel where the eclipse came out across the east coast down in uh, McClellanville, just north, north of Charleston, South Carolina. I was standing there during the entire eclipse in 2017 and watched it. And it was humbling. And I know a lot more now than I knew then. So when the one happens next year, next April, one year from now, I'll be on my knees. I can tell you that much. Hummer, what turned you from sad drunk to mad monk? Funny story, Kent. It's the end of the world. Hey, where? Revelation 6.13. Just before the rapture, the stars will fall to the earth. The stars. You know, the people that live in lost angels. Lost angels or Los Angeles. Close to Death Valley. And there's a lot of those terms and stuff used around that area, but they like to call themselves stars. Why? Stars. Where did it come from? How did they come up with calling themselves stars? Because they are worshipped like a deity. Like a, what kind of a deity? Oh, an angel. Yeah, that's right. Like an angel. They are worshipped like they're a deity or a god or particularly an angel or something like that, right? So therefore, again, stars, angels, yep. And we have the fake people, the fake angels, the fake stars. And we have a shop window which the glass in the window represents the veil here in a moment you're gonna see a uh, depiction of an angel falling from heaven a fallen angel a corrupted angel that is here to uh, wreak revenge seek, seek revenge you might say but it's behind the window the window the glass itself represents the symbolism or image of the veil, the thing that keeps you from being able to, that separates reality from our reality, from the next level up, you might say, which we got to give things names, right? So we call it what? The fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, whatever. Okay. The other side where we cannot see past. Normally we cannot see past. The rose is a symbolism for the Taurus and birth. That's why it's there, so large in the background, symbolizing the birth location, the rose, the Taurus. And here in a second, you're going to see, of course, the spark. The spark that you're seeing there, the reason why they're doing that is because of this footage here. You can see a little spark that'll pop out here beside before the spark is the angel piercing the veil, the renting of the veil. That spark is the angel coming through. 
And I've seen this with my own eyes, like I've said before many times. I've seen it on top of the mountains in New Mexico and by the oceans and a few other places. But those are the two biggest areas where I've seen it. You can see it really good in this one. You see that spark out, that is out front. Let me pause it and back it up and go frame by frame. See that spark over there? Still backing up. Oh, there it went. See that spark? Right there. Next to this other angel, right? It sparks, and then what happens? Poof, you get an angel. And then it'll spark again. Whoops. What did I do? Okay. It'll spark again, and you'll get another angel. It's the spark of life. You have that same fire within you. It sits directly between your eyes behind a bone called the Krista Galley. Krista Galley. It's a bone in your forehead directly between your eyes. You can just look up Google Krista, Krista Galley. Okay. G A L L uh, I. I think is how it's spelled. And you'll see right between your eyes is the place, the place where Christ, the fire, hangs out. The fire of God that exists within you. Another spark. Revelation 6.13, just before the rapture, the stars will fall to the earth. And then, of course, I'm going back and showing this again, but here we go. I'm running this in a slow mode. You see all the purples that they're showing? Again, royal purple, because you'll see that in the angels, Ezekiel's wheel. It looks like light running multiple directions inside of a ball of light when you get to see an angel in person close up, which I have many times. And you see now you got the glass of the shop and this bubble is pushing up against it and you, you can see it's burning through basically because right now you're just getting a reflection across the street but it's burning through of course this is cgi you know computer generated um imagery but they know what it looks like they know what they're showing but they're just not telling. You see that? The purple lightning, just like we've seen that purple lightning at the Georgia Guidestones. Well, yeah, the purple lightning at the Georgia Guidestones when they exploded. And then they come back, oh, it was a dude that ran up and threw a, you know, something up against the side of it, ran off, and it blew it all down. Nope. That ain't how it works. Explosion, the explosion could not have taken down those, um, a small carry, you know, some explosion, explosive device carried in your hand. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Here we go, coming through. I mean, they're, they're making an effort to show you what you're looking at. It's like a giant, um, what do you call it, disco ball? Yeah. Do you reckon the disco balls came from this also? The reason why they were created because of the image that they were in? I would imagine it has something to do with it, whether the people knew exactly what they were doing and why or not but I imagine so now it's, now it starts turning looking like water doesn't it I wonder why that is see purple water everything basically looks like it's water now even over here right water 
there's a reason why and you can also still see the this rose here the Taurus an image of a bloom big bright flash and here you have a superhero a being with capabilities that we don't have or at least that we don't know how to use it's kinda weird you can see a face in here and stuff and all kinds of weird stuff but yeah isn't that wild looking look at the glass how it's they show it as being cut or melted back. See, that's the chop, chop glass. Okay, let's go to the next one. I'm showing these different ones because, well, it makes it a lot easier to explain the concept that I'm trying to get everybody to understand. This one slowed down also. They like to run things till, so fast you can't see what's happening exactly. So we start seeing sparks and electricity, and then the temperature drops. You ever wondered why things like, uh, uh, what's it called? The, um, well, CERN for one thing, but um like in the back to the future thing when the back when the car went through the portal the gateway the window right what did it what did it need it needed a bolt of lightning right it needed a spark it needed the power of god basically in order to open the window and allow it to go through what was it it was 1.25 gigawatts 1.25 I think that's what it was gigawatts go run a search for that number and um, CERN and you'll find out that's how much power they need to run the uh, collider the same exact amount even it's, it even says gigawatts now, I'm sure they need more power than even that to run the whole place. But I showed this in a video not too long ago. That's exactly what they need. Because they need the power of God. Because why? Well, because they are trying to be God. You know, they're trying to, they're working against the same thing that some people try to think that don't exist. God. And what they've done is they've studied nature long enough and seen enough angels and studied enough things just like I've been doing that they now understand how these things work they understand that that the Taurus is the natural flow of all energy in all things you know so when the lightning struck the car where was uh, what was the name Doc or whatever he was up there hanging on to the clock, right? Or to use this one in here. He was hanging on to the clock. And the lightning struck. What was on each side of the clock again? There was the clock, which represented the gateway. Or which was a symbolism for a gateway. And electricity struck it. And on each side there was uh, two beasts on each side. And I think they had wings on them. Because you always have to have the wings associated with the gateway. Just like your eyes are gateways and your eyelids are the wings. You have the lower one, which is the smaller, and the upper, which is the greater wing. Same thing with a woman's reproductive organs. She has uh, lesser and greater wings down there. Same thing we have um, when it comes to our ears, I mean, it's just 
It's all over us and all over nature everywhere. Yep, so spark, and then they go through the gateway, right? And when they come out, the car is cold. Cold, the car is like frozen and there's smoke coming off of it because it's so cold. Remember that? And what happens right here? Clothes freeze solid, don't they? You see, these are the little secrets and hints, but actual truth that's in this, if you have this knowledge that I'm trying to share with you. <coughs> I'm thinking about the um, Ark of the Covenant and how the temperature plays into some of that scenario. And I'm not quite sure when I'm sitting there thinking about it at the moment, but it just popped in my head. But, uh, yeah. Let me turn that down, at least for me. Most of the way. Looks kind of like, uh... I don't know why, but that just reminded me of the Twin Towers. Yeah, the Twin Towers. You know, because they basically shattered, didn't they? They shattered to dust. Rick, now has any of these secrets that I'm showing has anything to do with how that happened? Two giant buildings and even the steel core inside of it that would never come down under normal circumstances. But when you apply superpowers, you can uh, make two giant buildings shatter. Oh, and then a third one too. Yep. Funny how that happened, ain't it? And yet they're showing it here, how the particles will shatter. And of course you can see the purple and the deity forming inside, right? As they're showing it. Of course this again, this is this is uh Hollywood magic. Okay. But it's um close enough that I can explain enough that it's, I think it's fine to be showing and talk about. So we got water again. Hello, superhero. Yep. Let's keep going. I'm not going to go through this one. There's nothing that unique about it. And this one was the, uh, uh, Transformers. Some more superheroes falling out the sky. Coming down and landing. And let's see, where are they at? Look like they're at some kind of an observation center. Like the Vatican. The one the Vatican has is called Lucifer. Yeah, actually. I think it's in Arizona or New Mexico, Arizona. Yeah, they have an, uh, a telescope. The Vatican owns it there, and it's uh, called Lucifer. Imagine that. But they don't believe in God or the devil, right? <laughs> yeah, and this whole building itself is, again, the symbolism. These domes, what they do is they... They built the the temples and a lot of these buildings like this and stuff, and even the government buildings because they are also temples, temples of their God. But they built them in the image of um, 
how God designs things. So they very well of the real God. But they feel like the real God has them in prison. And they're rebelling. They think of it as a time prison. And even though they don't understand why God chose to do things the way he did and does. Because they are smart enough to figure out some of his secrets that were promised in the garden. When they eat of the uh, forbidden fruit. Meaning eat of it, meaning to consume it in every way possible. With your mind, with your body, with your soul even. And understand the secret of the forbidden fruits. And they're showing you some of the secrets, and I am too. And of course, here we got big balls coming in on fire, right? And same kind of scenario again, kind of. Looks like meteors and stuff that we see flying through the heavens every now and then, right? And of course, it was a large orb. Even the places they choose for these things to hit, symbolically, they mean something. Either it's part of what's coming in a plan, or it's the symbolism of what it's the locations like this stadium, which is a place of worship. Oh, no, that's a stadium they play sports there. There's no worshiping going on there. Oh, there's a lot of worship goes on there. And of course, as you can see, once again, we have a, a spear, a ball, a balloon, an orb, whatever you want to call it. And you have a what? Another burning bush, another burning tree. And for whatever reason, there's a mound back here that it hit on the way in. You could see it. It struck this mound in the imagery that we're watching because all this is fake, of course. But it hit, and they wanted it to hit here and show it hitting the top of this mound for some reason. Not positive on why they did that. I get the tree, the burning bush. You know, I get that. And I get this here being the angel symbolism of the fall of an angel. Or a superhero or a fallen angel. Revelation 6.13. Just before the rap. I'm glad you're getting it. Go on, man. Watch TV. Live. Skipping along. Blue angels. Clown celebrity salute to special. Blue angels. You see how they were just showing it's cross the stadium. Here we are again with the stadium. This is in the rapture symbolism for... In the Simpsons, Simpsons uh, cartoon, right? See the cloud? And then they show us a big orb again. Celebrity salute to special blue, an blue angels. Remember the uh, um. I got a couple of things in my mind. One is that these planes are, you could say blue or you could say purple, but they're called angels because they fly and they gave them their color because the color is the color of deity likely for the purposes of the cartoon because of what they're showing and symbolizing. Angels. And then they hit the balloon and pop it. Yeah. Stars fall for heaven. Again, it's symbolism that they'll use. <gasps> the stars are falling to the earth, just as you predicted. Homer, 
You were right. That must mean you were right about the rap. Oh, here. Let's see. No Flanders. It's uh. Dad, please don't go. They've always been wrong. Come in. Okay, now most people, most of you, not most of you, probably some of you, but I think it's, uh, there's quite a few people out there, but I think it's Hangman49, I think, Hangman something, if you type in Hangman and um, the word Petrified Trees, you probably go find his channel, and there's many other people talk about us, including myself, and that these mesas, what they call these mesas, that that are these, well, like kind of what you see in here. These are the these are the remnants of the ancient trees that used to exist on a larger Earth. I say larger, I mean I'm referring to uh, the size of things that lived here, because the trees at one point were astronomical, but over time because apparently we've been here for a while it's all been ground down and in the bible it says that the that the angels worked at the trees and cut them down and the trees themselves see they are they're some they're in the image of heaven again as well in god's image in in that image because it has a crown and then it has the center uh we'll call it pillar okay or the eye coming down you say I yeah well cut the wood and look at it it's got rings circles inside well that's cause of how, how long it grows duh but you're missing the bigger point which is the symbolism and understanding that a tree is in the image of us really and in, he in the image of God and heaven and, and also in the image of earth as, as it is itself the true image they're choosing to mock mock people again and put them on top of the mountain here on top of the tree stump with balloons and the balloons represent their spirits okay and just like i show at the end of this video the spirit the orb the balloon coming out of the mouse when he died and you can see it happening in humans and all other life i imagine and you can see, if you want to see it in humans, you need to check out my documentary, which is over on BitChute. Every time I try to load it over here on YouTube, something goes wrong and they either, either make me take it down or either they just remove it. They don't want that this kind of knowledge out there. Luckily, I'm able to talk about it because this ain't one of their big things they're trying to cover up. I guess because they think not enough people are paying attention. Who knows? Anyways, uh, yeah, so trees, ancient trees, understand the truth and understand that these trees had to be here a long time and they were covered with water and humans and life existed when these trees were standing and were still trees. But we've went through cycles and every time you go through this cycle, they're, the way God works, he works the same way in all ways. And that is, is that he will allow land to lie fallow every seventh period. Every seventh, you can say seventh year. You could say every thousand years. You could say every hundred thousand years. I don't know for sure what the number is, okay? But there comes a point to where anybody that's alive is not going to be living on the land where we're at right now. The new heaven and the new earth, particularly the new earth, will be on a different petal of the flower. Now, did you get what I just said? It's on a different petal of the flower. Or on a different... Um, just That's the best way to describe it. As a flower blooms, you can see one of those petals is where we exist. And there's much more of the flower still left. But the way God works is he cycles things. He, we get to 
ground down the earth basically here trying to grow up and be something decent while being attacked from every angle of course but we get to grow up here in this area and have our season in this part of the world w-h-i-r-l-e-d world because the world is not a ball and it's not just a little circle sitting out in the middle of nothing it's much more beautiful and much more grand and there's much more to the world because when these trees were here was a different cycle and these trees I'm just using this image as an example I could pull up some real ones but when these trees were here when they were originally growing and still had leaves on them it was a complete different cycle of a complete different human cycle life cycle the complete cycle from from the beginning the alpha to the omega at the end i hope you understand what i'm saying and i'm gonna get i'm gonna do another video where i'm gonna explain that way more in detail all right let's keep going all right let me fast forward again the balloons oh yeah here we go baby All I see is uh, basically symbolism for a spirit being shot out the heavens and falling to the earth. I just heard the boom. My stupid earth. And you'll notice that everybody's balloons get Wait for it. deflated. Wait for it. Wait for it. See? Everybody's balloons are all deflated and wilty looking, you know, because their spirit is low. Um, is the symbolism here, losing hope. That's why the balloons are there. It's the releasing of those balloons. They know that we go up to heaven or wherever we go from on our first stop from here is in an orb, in an energy orb. And there we go. He tries to pull off of Moses and command people. <laughs> and we've kind of covered this. See, they're all dressed. Only thing they're missing is wings. So he's warning you that something's going to go down. See, she's Isis. There's a birth coming. And when it goes down, you can't be scared. Knowing the things that we know, and God knows that we have been seeking the truth. God knows that we are his children. And yes, in life, we all have to die. But that word has the wrong connotation to it. We've all been taught that dying is a terrible thing. We've been raised ever since we were born. That when people die, it's awful. Is it? Or is that a deception and a lie? And when you, when you think about it like this, when you have a caterpillar, when he's molting and going to turn into a butterfly do you think when he's a caterpillar he knows when he dies he's going to turn into a butterfly who says that when we die beautiful wonderful things happen and if that's possible with anybody I would imagine it's the people listening to this video so I would say don't be afraid. God didn't put us here to be afraid. He put us here to learn and to develop our spirit. He didn't want us to be afraid of dying. He didn't want us to be afraid of anything. Just because you don't know 
what's going to happen don't mean it's the worst case. Just because you don't know what's going to happen when you die doesn't mean that the worst possible thing is going to happen and it's going to be awful and terrible. God wouldn't have created things like that. He knows our nature and he knows that we would potentially be fearful but he's accounted for all those things. And I like to think that I'm not afraid of dying. It has a lot to do with why I do what I do. Give up everything you have to give up and shout the truth from the mountaintops and sacrifice and suffering are badges of honor in heaven when you've sacrificed and suffered for the right things. I hope you understand. But Isis is expecting her second son approximately July 4th this year. And she has a tattoo on her chest, of course. Right there. <coughs> the wing wings signifying deity or ability to take flight to be like an angel and this thing on top of her head that looks like a step is actually a throne she's the throne bearer she will bring the sun onto the throne you see she's pregnant not in this image but in the what we were just looking at and he's the second son what would Satan be? What was Esau? He was the second son. Wasn't he? No, wait a minute. Excuse me. Esau was the first son and Jacob was the second son. Jacob of Israel. See, everything, when, this, when the son of Satan, a.k.a. the Antichrist comes, everything that was in the day of Christ will be in the day of him but it will be in reverse and backwards and upside down. Mirror image, distorted, hijacked. Yes, everything from the movement of the sun and the stars and various things will go down. It's been two and I've talked about this a number of times and I'll make it quick again on this is that Talking about their symbolism, just showing you in another way. They're showing you over and over the spark. Days. Rihanna. That was the spark. What is she crossing right there? She was crossing a gateway, an entry point. What is this image? This is the shadow of a door, a gateway, a door, a window. And she's crossing over and she's bringing something with her that's in her tummy. Right? And this is I Pet Goat's symbolism for this exact event, the birth, the crossing through the window, just like we just seen. The crossing through the window or the windows, the the veil, the crossing of the veil, and coming in with a with fire and a spark. Which you can see here. You see? This is called the Small Magellan Cluster, I think, this imagery in his background. So they've got him showing imagery of him coming out of the Small Magellan Cluster. I think that's what it's called. Forgive me if I am having a memory lapse. It's a lot of stuff to remember, man. And there's the spark, the fire of his arrival, of his spirit across the veil. Because what happens next? Well, what happens next in, in I picked it, which I didn't show here, was that he enters into the body with the spark and goes into the body. Yep. It's been two thousand. And then I was just going to show one more thing, and that is, see, she's doing that voodoo witch stuff there. And then they want to prove to you that she's an angel, she's a deity. 
I want to prove to you she's an angel, she's a deity. So they put her in the spotlight. Put her in the spotlight so that you can see she's being symbolized as a as Isis. The mother, the bearer of the throne. That's why her hair is all stacked up like that. It's the throne. Okay, and she's the vessel, she's the boat, she's the birth. And she's the deity. And it would not surprise me to find out who was in her womb. Yep. I'm very serious about that. And here's, of course, the Wizard of Oz. I love this scene because it shows the truth now that we know what it is. And that is, as we all see, like on Mr. MBB's channel, where people send in all the videos of the, the orbs in the skies, the lights in the heavens, just like I've done the documentary on. They're angels, they're deities, okay? Not everything you see up there is this, because there's other things, and there are man-made things in the heavens flying around. They like that triangle craft a lot. But they've had that sucker for a long time. And I've seen it with my own eyes. But here comes here comes the orb. Like the seen on Mr. MBB's channel all the time. The orb. The deity. Isn't it awesome to now be able to look at this scene and look at this movie and know actually what most of it that you're looking at is? I could take you through the whole movie and explain all the symbolism throughout the whole movie. And I mean everything. And there's your, your ball of light. You're bright white and round all about, like it says in the Bible. You know, Ezekiel's wheel, which again they show you here, which you'll see in a second. The wheel within a wheel. See your colors that it's showing you? Purple. Royal purple in the center there. Right here. Yeah. And what do we have in this royal purple ball of light oh we have a star yeah a star see it's right on her pole yeah on her staff you know and all over her head it's a deity and the light ball you've seen her flying in is how they fly yep The ball, the wheel within a wheel, the, the ball of light, the, it's a Taurus. It's, it's, it's the, a small image of, it, of how everything works in this world. It's why the water runs like it runs. It's why the stars move like they move or the angels. It's like the, uh, it's the way the tree limbs grow like they grow. It's the way your body is, is, is in the same image as that repeated times over and over it's like this no i i know we're not in kansas are you a good witch or a bad witch see she has a crown like a authority a crown of authority who me and here's the spotlight again again showing that this is supposedly a deity an angel that's going to drop the apple. The apple related back to the, the fruit, the 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 secrets, the 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 spark of life. She drops it, and then something new develops. Right, a new flower develops. But I wanted to point out she's in the, she's in the spotlight, or you could call it the eclipse. She's in the eclipse. See the circle down here that's gold looking. Just like you see around the sun when there's an eclipse. The, uh, yeah, I think you guys should get that. And we even have them sitting back here with their hands. See, this is, this is Trump, an image of Trump. Sitting here with his hands on his lap, just like he always does. With the pyramid thing, right?
And of course, I could get into that and talk so much about that. But uh, the iPet goat thing is exactly what they're doing right now. Right now. With the arrival of the Antichrist and all these things that I've shown you in this. And the symbolism. Yeah, right now. And here, of course, we've got another ball. And here we are, they're showing that you can see through, see across the veil. You can see through like a window, like a gateway. And, of course, it's in the image of the apple or the image of the Taurus, more appropriately. Okay. And they show you the Ezekiel wheel and this waveform right here, which is talking about frequency and flow of nature. And that is exactly what this is. This is showing you Ezekiel's wheel. And showing you another use that they're uh, that of the orb, the symbolism of a, be, being a window or a pathway, a gateway across time or destination. All right, let's keep going. It's like crazy, but there's literally people this wicked on this planet right now. And they're rich. And going to hell. That's us if we don't know the truth. Right? We're scared. We're terrified. We don't know what to do. We're frozen. If you don't know the truth. There will come a day when we're all tested and you're going to have to remember the truth because the truth is what will save you. The truth is what will set you free. Knowing the truth. That right there is also, this is, that is in the image of our world. Kind of. In a way, you have a you have two orbs, like one eyeball. Like if you were laying on your side, this was an eyeball and this was an eyeball. Two orbs connected in the middle where the Vesica Pisces would be. That is where we exist in the point of creation. We exist in the same image of how we reproduce, literally. And no, there's nothing about the human body our sexual organs or any of that that is profane i should be able to show it even right here or you know show my even myself or you or whoever because our bodies are not profane god didn't create us create us to be profane um it even says when we will truly see things clearly is when we can Take our clothes off, get naked, stand on our clothes, and not be ashamed and not uh, feel like we're dirty somehow. I'll get more and more into this explaining what I mean about the image of the world that we live in. But you could say there's a flower here. It, it'd be too hard to explain with that image, so let's keep going. Zeke's wheel. Of course, a wheel within a wheel, like I've talked about. Let's see what's next. Dumbass, and you suck. You said the end was coming. Rapture on stuff. <laughs> Mockers. Hey, you tempura, you're on broken. 10, 11, 12. This changes everything. Wake up. The rapture is coming. Oh. Bad. Just jumping forward here. Three, two, one. Oh, I'm wrong again. I'm nothing but a big fat. And they, as you notice there for a second, they showed uh, Saturn. Now, if you're going to heaven, why would you be going to Saturn? It's because they see Saturn as a god. No, not the god, but they see Saturn as a god. Just like they do Jupiter. Just like they do Venus. And that's why these have, they all have the names of gods.
from everything I've seen, I think they think that uh, that the uh, like they call Saturn and Jupiter failed stars, fallen angels. They were locked, according to the Bible, they were locked in their place because they failed to keep their way. Referring to the angels, failed to keep their way, so they were locked, frozen in their orbit, and they couldn't escape. And, yeah, so hopefully that makes sense to you. And then I'm going to explain this, and then I'm going to do show one more thing, and then I'm going to let y'all guys go. But you have to understand that the pillars, and typically on top of a pillar up here, it'll look like water flowing over and around the bottom down here. But these pillars with this ivory going in circles around it is like like the center of a tornado with the wind flying around it, right? It's symbolism again for the Taurus. That's why the tornado is called a tornado because it's related to the Taurus. It's the same reason why your uterus is called a uterus or a uterus, right? Yep. It's all about the point of creation. Trees and all the palm tree and all this is all symbolism, including the bell and the ring of the bell. The bell frequency. And I think it has something to do with the word bell itself. Because remember the worship of bell and, you know, the bull, the calf and all that. Yep, all Taurus imagery. Let me go ahead and move forward here. Wait. Floating orbs. Again. Before you go, there's one thing I gotta know. There was a this looked like oh, this is the separation of the wheat. See this is a farm, like a picture of a farm. And this is wheat, piles of wheat. You can see a farmhouse back there in the background. You know probably why they use that but these are these golden looking orbs again floating here not attached of course we're in heaven in this imaginary place right but they're showing you the orbs again the spirits they're just giving you hints then you got the rolled pillow here and this fluted back uh the, the what do you call that the head of the bed whatever uh you know you can see the curve that it's doing again that's that's showing you sacred geometry is what it is. And this roll being on the bed with a pillar laying on the roll. You know, it's all little small secrets. Before you go, it's one thing I gotta know. What happened to my family? And what did he pull up in order to be able to see into earth? He pulled up, oops, Back up one, come to it again. To my family? Well, he pulled up a window, didn't he? A gateway. Yep. What does the technology you're using right now allow you to do? Does it allow you to see across space and time? Does it? Your computer or your phone, your cell phone, your iPhone, your eye phone does it allow you to see across space and time it does it does people completely on the other side of the world are listening to my voice as you are right now and so are you but there's thousands of people all over everywhere listening to it it's a window it's a gateway why do you think gateway computers name themselves gateway why do you think uh, Will I Am Gates invented a product called Windows. Yeah, it's the forbidden fruit. We're using it even right now, even though we're using it for good. And hopefully, we have the blessings of our Father for using it this way. But these are gateways. These are this is forbidden knowledge we weren't supposed to mess with. But we did, and we are. Oh, why didn't we listen to Dad? I'm gonna save 
to keep going. Of course, then he gets in a, gets into a fight with God, and God shows you this God, who's ever their God is, shows you the hands, right? See, there it is again. Just like Rihanna did, right? So what God do you think that was? Ain't the one that I pray to. No. And I'm not going to drag this out right here, but this is showing where this mouse got caught. Got caught in a rat trap, and there happened to be a, a camera running for whatever reason this person did this. But what they caught was, let me speed it up here a little bit. When the, when the mouse dies, you see the orb pass. Watch right in there. There he went. I'm going to zoom it up here so you can see it a little better. Watch right here. See that? One more time. That was the spark leaving the body in an orb. Headed off to wherever mouse spirits go. You see, even when you die, you're gone in a flash and nothing's going to hurt that mouse anymore. Yep. And yes, indeed, now you know more heavenly important truths. So I'm glad I was able to get able in multiple different ways to be able to do this in a better way. I hope y'all guys enjoyed this. And I hope you don't forget also, I am... Uh, running a uh, fundraiser and I'm hoping y'all guys as much as you can be will be there for me because uh, well let's just say I'm in a spot and uh, it seems like when you get in a spot is when no one wants to kind of help too much that's just the way it seems to work sometimes but I believe that for the right people with the right capability you'll be be willing to help me out a little bit and get me get my fundraiser on up a little bit further. I hope so, because I want to continue this work and I want to try to have a roof over my head. All right, I love you guys. Not trying to make you get feel guilty or anything. Not the intent. It's just I my my channel's not monetized. I can't go out and get a regular job. If I do, they take all my money. It's a long story. I've explained it before. But it doesn't work. Even if I make twenty five hundred dollars a month, I end up only taking home about six hundred bucks, seven hundred bucks at the most. I've tried, and I've tried fighting with them, and they won't change. And now I'm just stuck with it, and I can't drive. I don't have a car. I don't have a driver's license. I can drive, but then I got to deal with potential argument with cops and maybe go to jail. You know all that kind of stuff. It is what it is. Sacrifice. And I'm willing to make it. To keep doing what I'm doing. God's work. I love you guys. Have a great day. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Here on Logic Before Authority.